we're midway through one of the ultimate bucket list trips for every four-wheel driver in the world and one of the most rewarding places you'll see anywhere in Australia. I caught us dinner. <laughs> uh, it was just somebody else's dinner. This is the highlight of this whole year for me, coming back to Arnhem Land. The scenery, breathtaking. The camping, out of this world. I'm speechless. I do not know what to say. This is awesome. Perfect day. This place has got my heart. It's blown me away. And all in one, I am back in love with Arnhem Land. Last time you saw us, we were pushing through central Australia. With road closures, unseasonal rain and desert flooding, it meant we had to push like hell to make it out in one piece. Since we set off from Adelaide, we've had one bucket list location that has topped our list. It's a location that every red-blooded Aussie dreams of making it to, Arnhem Land. One of the final frontiers in caravan and camping in Australia. It's a place I've dreamt of making back to since I was there over eight years ago. Between us and it though, lies a 700 kilometer stretch of rough corrugated dirt roads. From Mataranka, we plan to take the central Arnhem Highway all the way out to the small town of Nullumboy. We're kicking this adventure off in true off-grid fashion with a quick dip at Bitter Springs, one of the more picturesque hot springs in the NT. With a swim under our belts, we're wasting no time in topping up the fuel tanks and getting back on the road. Well, I got this thing in my hand and that means tires are going down. That means we've hit the dirt. Dirt all the way now into Nullumboy. Not gonna make it today. We've got a really good campsite for tonight. But what's more important, have a look at this scenery's changed. We've got that knocking down winds that are coming through right now. I'm heading back out to Arnhem Land. Man, I've been thinking about this since the day we left. What, eight, 10 years ago? If you can't tell. This is, this is the bit, this is the highlight of this whole year for me. Coming back to Arnhem Land. on Central Arnhem Highway. Pretty special bit of highway, this one right here. It's gonna be a long old drive in. We're towing the vans, of course, she's fairly corrugated. And from memory, we're looking at around about 650, 680 k's of corrugated gravel all the way into paradise. Steph, Carly, copy back there in the dust. Yeah, mate, we just ran a little long back here. Now look, this is both of your first times in Arnhem Land. I haven't been back for a long time, and I've only ever been out here once, and it just, it captivated me, it really did. It stole my heart, and I think you two are gonna froth on this place. So much to see, so much to do, the culture, the fishing, the camping, the scenery, the wildlife, everything about it is off the charts. Yeah, mate, uh, and we've actually put a call out to a couple of the boys that I know out here who have given us a couple of little hidden spots and a couple of tips, so I think we're gonna be jam-packed out here. Right, -o. well, let's get that list off the fridge and tick that bucket. Let's go. Let's do it. Just driving along, eating up the K's, and your mind starts to wander as it does. And I was thinking back to the first time I came out to Arnhem Land. We're looking at about 10 or 11 years ago. We had an amazing journey out through here. I truly loved it. We got in touch with a local TO out here, and we were lucky enough to spend some time in one of the local communities. So we're shaking hands and introducing ourselves to all the locals, and out walks a young mum with a little toddler. I went up to say good day. The little toddler absolutely lost it. I mean, screaming, pretty much climbing up mum's dress to get away from me. I just thought, holy heck, not much good with kids. So anyway, went back to me TO mate, and I said, oh, truth, I'm sorry about that, man. Making that little fella cry like that. He started laughing, laughing his head off. He said, no, 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 don't be silly. It wasn't what you did. He's never seen a white bloke before. You just scared him is all. <laughs> How about that? Little toddler had never seen a white fella before. I'd like to chase that little fella up. He'd be a teenager right about now, because I reckon I know him a fair bit in counselling. Imagine you've lived your whole life out in this beautiful community in Arnhem Land, and the first time you get to see a white bloke, and it's my bloody head. Poor little dude. <laughs> with the day getting on, we waste no opportunity in stocking up on firewood. A quick run with the chainsaw, and we've got a roof load, ready for tonight's fire. 15 k's to go. Tonight's camp is tucked in right down the back of Mainora Outstation. It's the perfect place to break up our 700k stretch to Arnhem Land. There's no time wasted in getting set up and settling in for the night.
Don't even need to look at me watch. I know exactly what time it is. That's right. Beer O'Clock. Now, this place here, absolutely sensational. A lot of the station country out here, as you folks know, you're travelling around as much as I am. They're diversifying. Tourism's coming in and they're converting parts of their station to caravan parks and camping grounds like this one here. And this one, my goodness, is absolutely sublime. Grass areas, everything, got toilets, showers, got the whole thing. We've got our own area here because, of course, we're off-grid. We don't need any of that stuff, so we're away from the crowd. And it's one of the benefits of taking everything with you. You don't need to worry about any of that. There's a big old river here. Apparently, it's full of Saratoga, sooties, the magic B word, not beer, barra. We're not even there. We're only halfway. This is what I love about this part of the world. Holy heck, that's a frothy. Let's get stuck into it. So if you remember from a few episodes ago, we threw a few yabby pots in along the way as we were going on the Uda Dada. And your girl got up. With <laughs> lies. What? Okay. What? Okay, lies. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, you may have caught the most, but I feel like I had the most interesting bait. My salami olive cheese board spread for the little yabbies, which they loved. I was the first one that attracted all the yappies and you just reaped the benefits. Yeah, look, you did pretty well on that. I'm very surprised. Thank you. So, my question, what are we going this time? Because we are in Arnhem Land. I've been told by the locals, go for the beef. That's what gets it. Get the beef. And we've got a bit of a chicken carcass here as well. This was the one that I felt very confident about. Right, and it also annoys me, because this is the one that Stephanie drew. Stephanie just it. Oh yeah, it's a good size one. Look at that. It's a good size horn. Look at that in proportion to his body. Tell me you wouldn't be stoked with that. I'm just gonna pop this little bad boy in the fridge. I've got a little container down here. I'm just gonna pop him in the fridge. Actually, I'm gonna put him in there with the bok choy. He'll be fine in there with the bok choy. And what we're doing that for is because they go all cold and they kind of go to sleep. And it, it's a really humane way of dispatching any crustacean. I do the same with marin, with yabbies, all that kind of stuff. Pop them in the fridge, leave him in there. He goes to sleep. We get another dozen of those. And it's happy days, happy days. The morning light reveals another Kraken day. And before long, Steph and Harley are making the most of a secluded swimming spot down behind camp. We're up early this morning because we've got a huge day today. We're gonna to cover about, doesn't sound like much, but about 550 Ks. It's pretty slow going on the old central Arnhem Road. Good news, this evening, when we get in, we'll have done it. We're there, Nullumboy, right on the coast, the Arnhem Peninsula. One of the more stunning and remote places in Australia, and I'm frothing to show Stephen Harley Arnhem Land. So for now, I'm gonna pack up. We've got a big old day in front of us. With camp squared away, we're back behind the wheel, and it's time to cover some Ks. The old Arnhem Highway. It's about 700 clicks, but we have got a fuel stop in the middle now. I've had to do a bit of math just to make sure I get everything correct here. You see, this is not your average tour when we're going out through this track. I've had to make sure that I factor in that I'm not just sitting at a constant speed the whole way through this. I'm on and off the accelerator going over bumps, whoop de doos washouts, the corrugations. I'm gonna be looking at around about 25 litres per 100. That means my tank will give me, roughly speaking, about 500 clicks. The good news, halfway along we've got the little town of Bullman where we can refuel. Bullman, all the way through to Nullumboy, is about 430 kilometres. So I've got some leeway of about 70 k's. It's not a heck of a lot. The mids canopy allows me to have another jerry on the back. Put that in, gives me a leeway of about 150 all up. And I reckon we should be pretty good with that. 
trips like these, it does pay just to spend an hour getting to know what's going on with the track, what your vehicle can do with fuel, and how much you're gonna need. Because out of yet getting resupply, it's gonna cost you more than just a carton of beer, I'll give you that. But I reckon we should be pretty good. After 700 k's of corrugated dirt roads, we finally reached the town of Nullumboy. To gain a travel permit to use the Arnhem Highway and get out here, you need to pre-book your camping. We've booked the perfect spot at the Gove Boat Club, and we're gonna use this as our base camp for the next few days. Judging by that backdrop, I don't think we could have picked a better spot. Alrighty, we've just dropped the caravans off now. When I drop the van off, I've just got to adjust my mirror ever so slightly. I have it on a slightly different angle when I'm towing. Now, because these clear views have all the same factory functionality as the factory mirrors do, it means that I can use my in-cab controls here to just move those mirrors exactly where I need them. And also, my little cameras that go underneath here, they all work just as the factory units would as well, which means that on the dash, I can see everything around me at the front, the sides, and weird bird's eye view. They even incorporated that in these clear view mirrors. So I've got all the factory functionality of the original mirrors, but I can see significantly better back that way, thanks to these bad boys right here. Doesn't even matter if you're not towing. These bad boys should be an upgrade on your four wheel drive. We've made it, nothing boy. Now, because the Arnhem Highway was looking so darn good, we have actually made up a bit of time. We got a couple of hours before last light and I'm a big fan of sucking the guts out of everything. So, got a mate up here, Anthony. He suggested we head to a secret squirrel spot, see if we can't get a mud crab for the pot. Chances are a bit slim, I must admit, we've got like an hour of light left at best. And I mean, it's gonna be pretty darn dark in the mangroves, but nothing ventured, nothing gained. So we're gonna pop down in here, met up with Anthony and see if we can't, oh my goodness, that looks like there's gonna be a heck of a lot of sand flies in there. See if we can't grab us. Morty the mud crab. Let's give it a go. This is sick. Whoa. Oh, wow. This is cool. It's like being in another world in here. It's so cool. I'm kind of a good size for this. Yeah. A fit. I fit in the mangrove swamps. Your monkey paws are good for this too. <laughs> Cahill monkey paws. So we've just come into these mangroves here. We found a mud crab hole down here, but she filled in. So that mud crab's moved out. But as you can see, world's our oyster through here. Isn't it another world though? Hey, eh? have a look at this. You don't even have to touch the ground. You just walk on the mangroves. Come on, come on. Oh, that's better. Oh, where, where, where? You got that other hook just there? Yeah, come on. Any secret to this? Yeah, try and get it behind him and pull him out too, but you're gonna have to grab him either. Solid call, yep. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I've almost got him. Yeah, we've got ourselves a muddy down here. And he's right in the base of this tree. So, coaxing him out has proven to be a bit difficult. I managed to get him down to the corner here, so now we're going at both ends. Try and scare him across and we can pick him up. There he is. Look at the big claws on him. Oh, I've got him. He's got a hold of me. That's kind of good. Brief him. He's coming out that side now. Yeah. yeah. Let, let him try and get him to let go of you. And then I'll come in and help you with he's on either. He's on either side of the, yeah. <laughs> he's in quite the place. Geez, he knows what he's doing. He keeps holding onto that root. Oh, got him. His claws fell off, but. No, 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 you got him. Look at that. Yes. Look at that. Well, mangroves aren't the most pleasant place to be, but I reckon they are fantastic. There's a lot of sand flies, a lot of mud. There's Anthony somewhere around here too. Have a go at that. That's a mud crab. The Latin name for these things is dinner. Oh, geez, it's hot, isn't it? It is. That's hard work. This is nice and cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, man. The locals are sledging us, but we're, yeah, on, that's all right. we're on a roll. What a day. Driven up straight into Arnhem Land, into Nullumboy. Come out this afternoon with an hour of sunlight left, straight into the mangrove, smoked ourselves a big old crabby boy. Tomorrow morning we're gonna to be up at dawn, straight out in the boat, 
Not going to say anything about that because you just never know what will happen. But who cares? Look at this. First day in Arnhem Land, mud crabs and... Yep, that's what I thought I could hear. That's a cold beer calling. Let's get out of here. With that, we're taking in the final moments of what has been an epic day. To be sitting here on the coast with a cold beer in hand and soaking it all up is what I've dreamt of since I was last here. And to tow the vans out and have the perfect base camp, it really doesn't get any better. So given that we're in the top end, we we're feeling a bit inspired by some of their local cuisines. And now I know that we're not technically in Darwin, but we're in the neighborhood. And as I'm sure most of you would know that luxes are a meal that you can't, you can't miss in Darwin. So that's exactly what we're having for dinner tonight. A nice prawn tofu laksa. It's not a laksa unless you've got a hard boiled egg, but peeling the hard boiled eggs is a pain. So I've got a little trick that I've always wanted to try. I've seen that if you put them in here, give it a good shake up, it all peels. So I want to give this a crack. Hello, one. Oh, don't mush my eggs. But, look. Oh, there's... That's a perfectly peeled egg. I don't know about that bottom bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, I think one was undercooked, so I'm, I'm going to pass that off, but... One's yeah. had to be sacrificed. That's worth a treat. Get in there, Bob Chewy. Boys, grabs up. Here you go, sir. Oh, my... That is... Can I show the folks at home that? Look at that. Delicious. And what are we calling this? A laksa. A laksa. <laughs> laksa. Sweet fancy Fanny Adams. That is amazing, man. <laughs>Sun's just come up, absolutely stunning morning. We're here with uh, Anthony from East Arnhem Fishing Adventures. Now, basically, Anthony's laid it on the line this morning. He's come out and he said, I saw you as a true blue fisherman. And he said, I'm trusting you to catch everything today. None of that's actually true, folks. He took one look at me rod and said, you sure you want to come out in the boat today? I'm going to give it a crack. East Arnhem, I reckon we're in for a good day. What are you doing wrong with what you meant to be doing? <laughs> you can't walk. Does that count as first catch of the Does. With some live bait in the tanks, we're ready to try and catch ourselves a feed. The landscape out here is simply spectacular. Seriously, folks, if this location isn't on the bucket list, grab a pen right now and add it to yours. North East Arnhem Land. Today's the day, I'm gonna get a huge fish. This is my idea of paradise. Oh, shark, oh. he's been shark. Oh. Get out of there, sunshine. Get out of there, sunshine. Come on, get away from that big shark. Look at the sharks. Oh, oh. oh. oh geez. That shark's got the lot. Oh. What the heck? Oh, I've got a shark. Yeah, I've got the shark now. Yep. Oh, no, I've got the Mackie. Mac. I've still got the Mackie. He's just getting. Oh, there it goes. The Popped. Holy heck! That shark was <laughs> fast and furious. A little bit of wee came out then, folks, but that's a good sign. <laughs> Keep working. We're back at it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, crikey. It's all happening. <laughs> oh. oh, that's got yeah, some pull. Yeah. Could still be a big Mac. <sighs> Ah, oh, you <laughs> jerk. We are not having much luck with all these sharks around. We've got sharp teeth, haven't we? I they, caught us dinner. Yeah. Uh, it was just somebody else's dinner. Entree, maybe. This is what we're dealing with here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, now it's a shark. Now it's a shark. Oh, Whoa, there he is. Around the bloody. Oh, oh my gosh. He's so big. Huge. That's what you call a queenie. It's not the preferred species. Bycatch, we'll call that. I'll tell you what, it was nearly lunch for a shark or five. 
Let's pop him back in. Good luck, bud. This place is absolutely wild. The shark attacks up here are incredible. We're doing everything we can just to get the fish on board. <laughs> Well, there we go. It's, there's a lot going on out here. So much adrenaline. Oh. Those sharks. Yeah, the sharks are pretty next level. I am so rattled. <laughs> <laughs> I was so stressful and amazing, but the sharks were kind of terrifying. Well done, mate. That is perfect. Hello, Good work. Oh. I told you I was got, today was the day. I was going to catch a big fish. That's all they got. That little nick is all he copped out of that. Wow. Mm. You, did, you did more damage than the sharks, eh? Magicians <laughs> at avoiding sharks, these things. So fast. So yeah. fast. All right, we'll throw him in the tank. We'll get another one, buddy. Yes, let's do it. And with that, Steph is officially on the board. Something tells me we're going to be in a race against the sharks. <sighs> oh, oh, I just got snapped boy. off. That's what I got. Oh, jeepers, why are we using such small gear? <laughs> Yep, 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 yep. Get out of there. Yep, I got him. Oh, cute. Not as big as mine though, Graham. Well, it's a little smaller than I was hoping for, but I'll take it. Oh, no. Oh, guys, they're so far. Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at the shark. You have got to be quick around here. These sharks are rife. That was a fight. Graham, that one's a little bit bigger, but are we keeping him or are we throwing back? Yeah, you can keep a couple if you want to Yeah, we're keeping that one. That's going to be dinner. Probably. Keep going. You'll get him in. There you go, one down. Oh, oh graceful. Come at me, shark. I'll get you. Yeah. It's like a marathon. Good workout for you, mate. Oh, oh you're getting is... close, mate. Oh, oh, there it goes. I think there was a relief in that. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that was hard work. <laughs> I need a breather. Oh. Oh. Nice Spanish. Bob. Hey. That, my friends, is as good as it gets. We are out here, East Arnhem Land, Spanish Mac. <laughs> oh my God. I'm speechless. I do not know what to say. This is awesome. Perfect day. Anthony, thank you for taking us out, because, mate, this is perfect. I'm frothing. <laughs> Get out here. Do it, guys. Good work, oh, bud. Love that. That was lucky. Yeah. <laughs> With a few decent fish under our belts and a full esky, Anthony has one more place he wants to take us. I haven't laughed as much in freaking months. That was one of the, uh, that's one of the highlights of the year so far. <laughs> I've been looking forward to Arnhem Land to come back up here for 10 years, a decade, to get back up here. And we're only, it's day one, and we're slaying. What we got today was me, not so much. Stefan Hales killed it, catch of the day. Hales got a beautiful, this is a Spanish mackerel. We're gonna fill up this bad boy up. This one down here is, hope I get this right, a broad barred mackerel. Both of them exceptionally good eating. My money is on the old Spaniard. Gotta be careful of the front end of these bad boys. They've got some razor sharp teeth in there. Now, I did have a recipe planned. Yep. I had everything planned out in my head. I've bought all the ingredients, and eight minutes ago, literally, that all went out the window. Anthony's just given me another recipe, and I'm gonna share it with you folks at home, and we're gonna do it, I'm gonna do it to all the fish. Yeah. The whole lot, the whole lot. So, yeah. stay tuned. Right now, dad bod time. Oh. I'm going in the water. <laughs> oh, what a day. Folks, if you're ever up here, no one boy, I hope I pronounced that correctly, come and see Anthony. He'll take you out in his boat, the fishing's epic, but that's not why you're up here. It's, it's this, it's the experience of doing this. And no one knows it better than this guy right here. Trust me when I say, if he can get me onto a fish, actually to be truthful, he can get these two onto a fish, he can get anyone, <laughs> he can get anyone onto a fish, yeah. including you. Righto, Let's who's ready for this? We're just talking then. You can actually see the town of Nullumboy just down in there. She's chock a block, she's packed at the moment. Peak season. I'm looking around now. Nobody, not even one boat. 
Where is everyone? And I've said it so many times. You've just got to get away ever so slightly from where all the tourist brochures are and just look outside the box just that little bit. And now, something you don't see every day. With a quick swim, some fresh fillets and a few stoked faces, that wraps up an epic morning on the water. I don't know about you two, but that was a freaking mad morning of fishing mayhem. Honestly, I've never done anything like that before. I know we have been out on the boat on the ET, but that was something else, that was unreal. Those bloody sharks, I, uh, the moment there where I was uh, contemplating my ability to swim faster than a shark if anything should go wrong, but thankfully we didn't have to put that to the test. I know, I was slightly terrified there, <laughs> but no, we all survived, lived to tell the tale, and hopefully we get to eat this fish soon. Yeah, we've got a couple of different recipes in mind for those bad boys, gonna be bloody good. We've got, uh, well, most of the afternoon to spare, vans are locked away nice and tight. What do you reckon? Should we go for a boat peep, see what we can find? Yeah, let's go for a cruise, see what uh, East Arnhem's got to offer. Plenty, plenty is the word to put into that little sentence. Follow me, this way to adventure. Or dementia, I'm not sure which, I forget. Heading down to a spot called Little Bondi, very popular. You can camp right down on the beach down here as well. Oh yeah, have a go of this. Red rocks, white sand, blue ocean. Woohoo! I'll take Little Bondi over Bondi any day of the week. Any day of the week. Oh. How spectacular is this? With every corner is another spectacular spot. The coastline is scattered with little coves just like this. What do you reckon, folks? Could you park up and camp here for a few days? Let us know in the comments down below. You know, you'll often hear things about towing, especially when it comes to caravans. You know, you're restricted on where you can go and you're, you're not going to really see Australia because you can't get your caravans in there. But folks, I'm finding it to be completely the opposite. We've set up one of the most absolute cracking base camps you'll see anywhere. And yet we're able to come out here with the vehicles for a couple of days, whatever, a week, who cares? Because you equip your vehicle just like you would if you didn't own a caravan. So you can come out here, you can camp, little Bondi for example, there's one person up this end of the beach. We've got the whole place to ourselves if we'd permit it down here. Today, we're moving on. Wait till you see where we're camping tonight, by the way. So towing, for me, has just facilitated so much more freedom. It means we can get back to a base camp, get a shower, you get a toilet, you got everything you need in there. Or unhitch, it takes you 30 seconds, and head off into the wild unknown and explore places like this. Caravans. They're in my blood. They are in my blood. Guys, what a spot. What a bloody spot. Mate, that drive in has been magnificent. I am looking forward to tonight's camp. Now listen, just uh, maybe we should stop and go and put two pairs of underpants on, because I tell you what, when you see this place, it could get all out of control. And couple it with the fact, for once, we got fresh ocean caught seafood ingredients. Doesn't happen often, but no. when it does. It does not happen often, my friend, but we are cheering. Mate, tonight's uh, feast looks unbelievable. So yeah, this one's gonna be all time, I think. We've got a kilometre to go. I'm just gonna set the scene for you, just so you start vibrating early. First and foremost, ocean views, chair on the outlook, maybe even wet a line, couple of cold brewskis, Fish done a couple of different ways. Get Morton the Mud Crab all boiled up. Roll out the swags. Put the rooftop tent up. Get the fire going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord, he's lost the plot. But, mate, I am frothing on this too. We left the Mavericks back there. And, uh, yeah, just a nice, quiet night out under the stars in the swag top. This is going to be unbelievable. I don't think it's going to be quiet at all. This cracking little spot is Mackison's Beach. With camps scattered along the Coffee Rock on the Gove Peninsula, it's the perfect spot for us to pull up and enjoy a night under canvas. Just 
gonna grab him to firewood off here. Here we go, this roof rack. This is the Titan roof rack from Roller. What I like about it is it comes with a whole bunch of accessories so that you can mount things up here that you ordinarily would put maybe in your canopy. Take for example, this right here is my gas bottle, but I've got nowhere in the canopy right now to mount it. So Stefan Harley have put it up here for me. It comes with a little mounting platform down there to make it super easy. Max tracks, of course. The other thing I really like is there's these little patented grooves down here that you can put your ratchet strap hooks into and it means your, your straps don't move. You can really get a good, good tie down point. These bits of wood up here have been here for a couple hundred k's. They haven't moved a bit. You can move the slats around if you want to. What I'm getting at is that this roof rack is fully customizable to be pretty much anything you need it to be, depending on what you're carrying up the top. As for us, this firewood is not coming home with us. We're using it tonight. With the vans back at the boat club, it's back to basics camping out of the Forbies. To be able to tow the van all over the country and still do overnighters out of the Y62 is exactly why I set it up the way I did. It really doesn't get any better. Tell you what, there's views, and then there's that right there. Cheers folks at home, Arnhem Land, freaking nailed it, absolutely nailed it. We're just knocking up a quick little uh, entree here. Bit of fresh ceviche, fresh fish cooked in lime juice. I'm actually so impressed with how much this fish has cooked, don't you reckon? Yeah, mate, it's, uh, that's how it works. Kale, get on in here. Nibble on a bit of that. Talk me through it. Look, Ooh. fresh fish, mate. Yep. Avocado, tomato, jalapeno. Cooked only with the lime juice. Get it straight in your mouth. Oh, yeah, look at that. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah, no, I could eat the hot. Speaking <laughs> of good, I'm probably going to put my fish, but. Yeah, yeah. you're up. Yeah, this is only entree, so <laughs> yeah. don't fill don't, up. Don't overload. <laughs> Just get a, get a close up of that. Mmm. -mm. All right, holy heck folks, what <laughs> what a freaking day. Out in the boat, swimming, beaches, far east Arnhem land. And now to end up at a place like this, this, oh, this camp, I don't know whether you can hear that, sound of the ocean through there. And it's one of those nights where the temperature is kind of, it's kind of blood temperature, like it's just utterly perfect. There's a gentle sea breeze come, oh, I sound like an advertising agency. I'll stop right there. Now look, done a bit of prep work. Obviously we're having fish tonight, that's going without saying. Done a bit of prep work, let me just talk you through it. We've just got whatever I could find in Catherine. Now, Catherine's had some supply issues, so thus it was a bit limited on the vegetables. And that's not such a bad thing because what we're doing tonight is just basically using whatever you can find, whatever's laying around and keeping it super rustic. We've got some carrots, got some bok choy, some zucchini, some red onions, some tomatoes, a uh, little bit of lemongrass, we're gonna need that. Uh, we've also got the fish. Oh, hang on, I don't know what I need. It's gonna jump in here to me mitt's pantry. This is the only recipe you're ever going to see me do. Maybe I should. Maybe I should. No, I'm, I won't. I'm going to restrain. I was going to go and grab the Vegemite. I'm not. And I'm not putting salt either because of this stuff right here. We do need a little bit of cayenne pepper just for a little fleck, a hint of heat. Some black pepper. Uh, where was I up to? Lemongrass I told you about. This is going to be the hero. Ponzu sauce. We'll get onto that in a second. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a fillet of fish out of here. Now this is mackerel, and we're gonna make individual bundles. Gonna put a bit of butter down there like that. Underneath there, on top of that, just gonna put a couple of pieces of onion, just some naughty boys on top. Like I say, I'm keeping it pretty rustic too. That goes on top. A Couple of me little, look at that. A couple of me little carroty boys. And I'm a big fan but throw on a few fresh Tommies in there as well, just because you can. That's the basics of what we're talking about. Get yourself a bit of lemongrass. Now, our bundle's starting to come together, and I said to you I was going to sort of poach this or steam it, and the way to do that is you need a little bit of liquid. The liquid we're going to use is quite salty. It's called ponzu sauce. Roughly speaking, ponzu sauce is a mixture of soy and citrus. Oh, it's, it makes my mouth water. It's umami. 
It's what gives this that unctuous taste, that really satisfying taste. Ponzu. Just gonna get a little bit and just go for a bit of a drizzle over the top, not too much, just a hit more of citrus. So I've got a lime here, and we're just gonna give it just a little go with the lime on top. Just a hint of cayenne, just a hint for the flavor that's in it, the heat that's in it, and of course, pepper. Now, my wrapping skills at Christmas are diabolical, but with this, it's pretty simple, because all you need to do is make yourself a bundle. It doesn't need to be terribly rocket scientist. That's all you need. A cute little bundle, just like that. Now, I've got Harley and Steph to put Morty on the old fire down there. Morty's gonna need a few turns and a few flips and will be mm, a couple of different ways to cook mud crab. You've all heard of chili mud crab. You can boil it, you can steam them, you can do a whole heap of things. I'm gonna tell you the God's honest truth. We forgot to bring anything to cook him in. So we had to put him on the coals. He'll be ready in about five minutes. We'll let him cool down, crack those claws open. Mm, madre. Now, <laughs> in here, let me get me parcels of goodness out. No rocket science, folks. I've turned the barbecue right down because I don't want to burn anything in here. You just want to try and make sure that when you wrap up your parcels, there's no holes, so the steam's not just evaporating out of there. All right, we all just fit in here. I'm just making sure there's no holes in the alfoil and the heat is turned right down because you want this to steam, you want it to poach in there. Pop the lid down. Let's go and see how our mud crab is doing. Ooh, man, holy. What they call a Queensland lollipop. Mm. Yeah. 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 That's so good. Oh damn. That's good. Alrighty. Oh, gee whiz, I'll tell you what, if you've never had mud crab on the fire, I highly recommend you give it a go. Let's just have a little look in here. Woohoo! Steamy goodness. Oh my lord. Guys, we're good! Oh, Struth, you didn't waste any time, did you? <laughs> we are so ready for this. You got plates? Yep. We do. Right, eight. Uh, fire. Eat. Yes. That's That is unbelievable. It's such a simple dish to do with any fish. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. In the whole steaming process, the flavour of the vegetables, the herbs and spices, the ponzu sauce, and of course the fish itself just all comes together into one big chapter. And if you really want to get fancy, you can make yourself some rice and stir in some coconut milk. Put this on top of that. I tell you what, if you don't have a significant other, you will after this meal. And the best thing about it, if you're doing it out in the bush like we are, you wrap this up, you put it in the bin, there's no washing up. Sensational, guys. San bloody sational. We awake the next morning to yet another cracking day. It's spots like these that I need to pinch myself about. Get a load of it. How good's this? As you guys know, Harley and I love having a coffee when we go out camping. And even though we've left the Mavericks at base camp, we can still bring a bit of coffee luxury out here when we're camping just with the swags, thanks to the 12 volt projector system in the back of the D-Max. We got bulk power in this thing. We're running a 200 amp hour lithium battery charged by the DC to DC charger. But the best part is the projector 2000 watt inverter, which means we can run all of our appliances with no stress at all. Now, if our batteries were getting low, the beauty of the projector inverter charger is that it allows us to plug into 240 and charge our batteries at 120 amps, which is huge. Now I've got my coffee, but I better make one for Harley too. Have a look at this place. Absolutely spectacular. I'd go as far as to say it is one of the most special spots in Australia. Now let's just have a quick talk about the elephant in the room. Permits and passes to get into Arnhem Land. First and foremost, you're gonna need a pass to drive the Arnhem Highway. Super easy, just jump on the line. Once you get into town, you're also gonna need a pass. It's called a visitor pass from the Dimaru Council to visit all of these locations out here. So if you wanna do day trips from town, you'll need another pass. 
Now, if you want to camp in any one of the several absolutely stunning campsites out here, you'll need to pre-book your campsites as well. It's a bit clunky in my mind because you have to book the actual site at the campsite you're going to. Now, if you've never been here before, how do you know that site number one of six is the best one to book? You just gotta take potluck and hope that you like it when you get here. There's also a permit if you need to buy liquor when you're up here. It's another permit as well. So there's quite a few. They're all available online, reasonably easy to get. Do your research, pre-book your campsites, and get up here and check out one of the most unbelievable spots in Australia. We've got another huge day planned, so I'm not mucking around getting a feed on the go for the crew. With a solid brekkie into us, it's time to get camp packed up and hit the road. I've got two locations marked on my map that I reckon Steph and Harley are gonna love. Well, I gotta say, I have stayed in some very fancy camps. This one right here, Northeast Arnhem Land. Cross my fingers and hope that I will one day be back, for it is up there with the best campsites I have ever had the good privilege of spending a night in. And one night just ain't long enough. Anywho, today, we've got a very loose plan today, and I like that. A couple of water holes I wanna go and check out, go for a bit of a dip. I just generally enjoy one of their last days in East Arnhem Land. First night without the van. Yes, correct. It's, uh, it's been a fair while, so look, it was a bit of a treat. It was. It was nice to kind of go back to basics and yep. sleep with the swag flaps down, hear the ocean breeze come in. That was pretty delicious, but look, I am excited to get back to our creature comforts. Well, it's nice to have the option to do both. It's not long before we're pointing our noses towards one spot that the locals have told us we simply cannot miss. Ooh, have a look at this. A little waterfall-y kind of water crossing here. That's the beauty of Arnhem Land. There's so many little places you can jump into, whether it be to camp for a week or like we're doing just now. We're just gonna pop into this place here. It's called Goanna Lagoon. We're gonna go in for a bit of a look-see. Have a look at that. Crystal clear. Look at that. Can you see that? That is absolutely stunning. Oh, this is sick. It's real cool. This little gem is called Goanna Lagoon. It's a fresh, crystal clear swimming hole, and it's a spot you could be fully forgiven for thinking is in Cape York. Fresh, crystal clear water. The waterfall up this end, a big swimming hole down that end. To get to the swimming hole, you better have a good doggy paddle style, because you've got to go through this. Check this out. Paradise! Woohoo! This is so cool. This is unreal. I knew my doggy paddling skills would come in handy one day. How good is this? <laughs> of course you did. Welcome to Golan Lagoon. <laughs> Grateful. The beauty of Arnhem Land is every corner you turn, there's a perfect little cove, fishing spot, or a place to camp. We blinked and had spent a few days enjoying the area. Yeah, this is what I've been looking for. Let's pull over, take a look at this. It's a bit unusual. It's something you don't see all that often. You know, connection to country and culture in East Arnhem Land is super, super strong, and of course, the stories and Traditions are all handed down from generation to generation in the way of paintings and song. And one of the ways they paint up here is on bark. This is uh, where they've collected the bark from this particular tree here. It gets taken off in one big massive sheet. They then put it over a fire, stretch it right out and make it nice and flat because of course this will come out curved. They make it super flat, let it age and then the paintings that you see are drawn on the bark traditionally because of course there was no paper back in the day. They didn't, couldn't go to the shop and buy paper. They used bark amongst other different medium, but bark was a real popular one. Have a look at the tree up the top, completely healthy. Doesn't seem to do anything to the tree at all. Yeah, I don't know how the tree still survives, but it seems to do so without any problems. And it is coated 
in little green tree ants, which will give you a little nip if you're not careful, but you can get back at them by biting their bum off. It tastes a bit like lime. I just want to say a heartfelt thank you to the traditional owners of Arnhem Land, the Yongu people, for inviting us in and letting us enjoy their little piece of paradise. I've looked forward to coming back here for the last decade and it has not disappointed. It is just, if not, even more beautiful than I remember. And this just hasn't been long enough. Cross me fingers and hope that I will be back. And next time, I'm gonna spend a bit of time up here. I'm really gonna suck the guts out of it. Oh, wow. That is awesome. Look at that bloody big hole. Oh my gosh, have you ever fished on top of a cliff before? Not like that, I haven't. <laughs> We're about to give it a go though. East Arnhem is filled with plenty of spots just like this. It's truly an untouched paradise. With the rods in hand, it's time to try our luck hooking a barra. North East Arnhem, a more spectacular spot in Australia you ain't gonna find. This place is mind blowing. Yes, it's a bit logistical to get up here. You've gotta get your permits right, gotta book your campsites, and all your ducks have gotta fall in a row. But trust me, when they do, this place is 100% worth it. It probably already is, but if it's not, chuck this bad boy on your bucket list. Northeast Arnhem, I will be back. Folks, where's the fish? Not, they're not here right now, but that doesn't matter, because we've still got a few more days up our sleeves, and we are gonna suck the guts out of them. We'll catch you next time on Off Grid. Next time on Off Grid, we're on our final push towards Darwin with one spot I've dreamt of visiting since I was a kid, the Daly River. Famous for its barramundi, home to hundreds of snapping handbags and a spectacular spot to pull up and camp. Our goal is simple, get Steph and Harley onto their first barramundi and reach Darwin for one day that can't be missed. Coming soon, only on four wheel drive 24 seven.